Never the end is 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 never the end The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe 2022. Y'all can shame me for my decisions. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons. I remember key. this. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Mm. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Yup. Okay. Now, what I love about this game, for one, of course, is the narration like is amazing it's amazing but also the liminal spaces like look at this it's completely empty whoa pressing e i love how meta that is that if i press e it makes a keyboard sound All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Now, I remember if you tap the computers... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Like, turning them off does something. I can't remember what it does, but it does something. I feel like the game has went through a graphics update. Trying all the doors. Yeah, turn that off. I don't know why I'm turning them off, but I feel like that was critical. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Mm-hmm. So you say. What's up? When oh Stanley yeah. Came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. This this right here. This right here. I remember this. And I remember I immediately of course went the opposite of what he said. The first playthrough. I'm going to go what he where he wants me to go this playthrough. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided room. to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside of you. That's creepy. 
using slides to assure employees that everything make sure you slide as a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some level on the text <laughs> everyone is unique you most of all number of slides on the slide slides charts charts and slides it's so stupid rate of which charts on the same slide depict the same information rate of increase in graphs per slide please no more charts i'm begging the boss appreciation minute on your boss appreciation minute works you circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss fill out the traffic kit solving interpersonal conflict if you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself but more inclined towards conflict let your the kind of person to imitate conflict why would we hire you what are your dreams for the future <laughs> nature mitosis transcend plant life <laughs> spring break this for not getting fired talk less do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition don't get fired all right oh the broom closet the infinite broom Stella closet stepped into the broom closet but there was nothing here no path to follow just an empty broom closet no reason to still be here mm -hmm. but i'm here bro it was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Basically, I gotta run through this process for my audience. You know what I'm saying? Innate aliens like me being in a broom closet. You realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. It's significant I never to me. I thought to mention it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Because it Maybe is. When you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. I want y'all to put that in the comment section. I want y'all to spam. The broom closet ending is your favorite ending. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. Therefore, I'm prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I wonder, is there anything more past this? Ah. Second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm there we go. I'm of an entire species of invalids. <laughs> there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh yeah, I remember this. Oh, we're gonna go upstairs to the boss office real quick.
because the boss knows that what the boss says goes, if the boss suffered losses, then the then that's what the boss chose. Extreme bathroom. And Time Magazine with a big clock on it. Nice. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 four five but of course stanley couldn't possibly have known this stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck Amazing. he stepped into the newly opened passageway i feel like i don't remember the whole thing going dark like that but i guess it's always been like that holy crap That gave me chills beyond belief. This is so strange. Holy forgot the chill Descending factor deeper into the building. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Ooh. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large That's right, the I remember this. mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Mm. There's my screen right there. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control, never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart mm. of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he 
would dismantle the controls once and for all. So this is really, really cool because I remember the lights being actual buttons and like they definitely did a graphics update or something. This is really dope. I remember all of this. This is incredible. Okay. We're not going to go for the bomb defusing ending. What are we doing? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I wonder if there's a way for me to like, I don't know, go back without doing anything. I don't think there is past this point. All right, we're going to shut the power off. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? Yeah. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. This is beautiful. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. See how they said Stanley stepped through the open door? Just like earlier? So this isn't real. Like none of this is real, I don't think. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Guess that's the good ending. All right. Now let's do this again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. The input received. I need to do that three more times. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. All right, so this time I chose right. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. A dollar twenty-five? All your co-workers have mysteriously vanished. Here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. 
really worth it. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And then I'm not going to do that either. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Mm. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. What is he talking about with that? See, I don't remember that. What does he mean by her? Oh, this is awful. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another... Oh, no, 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 you can't... Ooh. Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Um, Let me double check. I forgot about that. <laughs> no, I just did it. Here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Mm. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't mm. understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. Whoa, what is he talking about? I noticed it sooner. You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? <laughs> well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. What? Please observe this helpful instructional video. Oh, I don't remember unlocking Choice. this. It's the best part of being a real person, but if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. <laughs> he could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself <laughs> speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. <laughs> Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> what? Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. At Do least eight. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally... If you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. <laughs> At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Oh my god. Ah, welcome back. You. you have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. 
But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. I don't like where this is going. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. Interesting. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. They really put a gate up. They said, no unaliving yourself. Oh, I could slip through this one crack. No. Hmm. Yeah, they're making you go all the way. This is cool. They're really making me go all the way back. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. I love this. The sound. The sound in the background. It sounds glitched out on purpose. That is epic. They are so epic for this. Stanley can't jump. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? This is so my story cool. Is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To Ooh. willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. <laughs> What's the answer? What do I do? Oh. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> no, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. <laughs> Oh, that's creepy. Yo! I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. This what, is cool. Did you think be funny? You just had to see. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Mm. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Y'all already know what I'm about to do. Y'all already know what I'm about to do. 
No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, I'm going to go on the left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Oh, he they locked the broom there. closet. They locked the broom closet. Coming to a staircase, you can't go down. He walked upstairs to his <laughs> boss's office. <laughs> you can't go in the bathroom. They said, no, you're going to complete the story the way we want you to. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human. Whoa, life. there's Shocked, no unraveled. He called in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. Wait a second. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Is wait, it doesn't use my mic, does mm -hmm. it? Stanley spoke the code. Oh. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Oh, they made it to where it's impossible on. Night Shark 115. I'm yeah, sorry, no. is there a problem? He, they're playing you didn't me. You me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. <laughs> this is played. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of <laughs> respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... Perfect. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Whoa. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. The end. This is I cool. Walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. This is epic. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. Mm. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Cool. All right. We're going to try and get the inputs. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay. There we go. I got two inputs. New content. What? Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? This is so freaking genius. <laughs> this is so genius. I can only go that way. Oh, wait, the phone. This is creepy. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. <laughs> the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. <laughs> We're just now cracking into the new content from this game. This is actually insane. This game is insane. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. I'm creeped out. Mm. I'm creeped out. Mm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if... Um, oh, okay. Let's see the content. <laughs> Give me the content, Stanley. Very liminal. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh, no, no. I know y'all not playing. They're playing. They're playing. I'm out of here. Y'all are playing. I'm already knowing. Is, is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Whoa, you can actually jump. I'll do all the jumps, fine. Let's see what happens if we do all the jumps. You can only jump in this one spot. That pisses me off. I'm mad. Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. 
I'm ready for whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you for enjoying That's it. it. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. A commentary. Started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed <laughs> off on this? I'm infuriated, and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally. Accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about? No frills, no gimmicks, just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Friend? Oh, it looks different. I love this game. I love this game, y'all. What is this? The old office. Psst. Stanley. Come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. No. I haven't seen anything, so I don't know what's going to happen if I go this way. But this is where it changes, right? Because I could go the vent way. And I'll be something entirely different. Oh. You don't want to see the cool surprise I made for you? Well, fine. You're a dork anyway, so who cares? I want to see what happens if I ignore it. The first time and then i'm gonna go back and do it if i can go back there's a new content doors closed we're back to old content somehow when stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left this was not the correct way to the meeting room and stanley knew it perfectly well perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first just to admire it wow yes this room what a beautiful room. What a but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided... Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yes! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. No, oh, yeah, maybe, it's the loop. He thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Mm -hmm. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at mm -hmm. last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. 
This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was this is so cool. much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. <laughs> I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Mm. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. He's on that copium. I am okay. Mm, I'm still here. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Then lost his mind. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man I remember who this. had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Oh my gosh. And she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Oh, gosh. Oh, my office is still messed up. They want me to go through the vent? I will try the vent this time. Psst. Stanley, come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. 
Okay. This is okay. different. You remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? <laughs> well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Whoa. Whoa, this looks cool. Oh my god. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. <laughs> you see, Stanley, doesn't Whoa. the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Graphs. Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Don't sweet zone. The Stanley Parable on Steam. <laughs> Aw, oh, 2013, when the Stanley Parable was released. Wow. Collector's Edition, Audience Award, 2014 Independence Game Festival. This is really cool, actually. Our first kiss, my first car, the release of Stanley Parable in 2013. Smile because it happened. A trip down memory lane. The Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable demo, that's cool. Unachievable, it's impossible to get this achievement. Go outside, don't play for five years. That's an achievement? This is really interesting. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. <laughs> That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Mm. This game is so ridiculously self-aware, it's crazy. What is this? Memory zone maintenance? Interesting. People play games because of what they can do inside them, and your game is very good at letting letting them know they can't do anything. Literally anything. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. Mm. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Wow. That's how some people legit feel. That's how some people legit feel about many things. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. Oh, this What's is this? creepy. What's down here? Hmm. 
Yo, what is this? Oh no. Oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Not if you put them all the way down here. <laughs> not recommended. I could not be bothered to play this by Bug Livia. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny with his humor and dialogue. Wait, is this a real person? Is this a real review? Like, could I find this on Steam right now? That blows my mind if this is like an actual review and they included it in the game. That's crazy. That's crazy. Blog proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. This doesn't look as happy as the previous spot. You notice that? Now it's all raining. The Look, the trees are barren here. It's all ugly. There's no game like the Stanley Parable, period. Okay, let's see what this one says. Noodle Shaft. Well, the idea for the game is good. Mm -hmm. For someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. Mm. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 By do, Cookie do, do, do. Nine. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button. That's wrecked. Well, and and that's for, and that's from yes, 2014. That. If I'm truly too preachy then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Mm-mm. And here it is. Go ahead and give. Oh, you're back, you see. You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. <laughs> they want me to press the oh, button again. I'll outline it for you very briefly, and you can tell me what you think. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. I wonder how treatise, long he goes on manifesto. for. Treatise. Manifesto. Manifesto. All right, I'll press the skip button. Treatise. Manifesto. Just because this is getting annoying. Treatise. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this. 
and whether they'll edit the rating of their <laughs> Steam review. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making... Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the oh. button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. Where's the door? The last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just, wait... How do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? Literally. I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something. Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! Whoa! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times, and there's... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. How far oh, did I go goodness. now? I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, but it isn't Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't... Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. Mm, Lost, the plant. Lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe oh, the clock stopped as working the collapse too. of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single... He's done. He not even here no more. This is creepy. All right, let's see where he's at. Oh, the vent doesn't even work anymore. This place is shut down. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much. They said first he didn't entertain us. Now he went shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. The end is never 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 the and uh. Oh, it fell through.
Whoa. This is crazy. Wow. It's gorgeous. It's literally beautiful. I don't even want to skip past this. This is, oh. That was the sound I was hearing before, but now it's a lot closer. don't work anymore. Oh my god. Oh my god. And now it's back to a normal gotten insane this game is so brilliant the way that it breaks the wall so many times and how self-aware and the way that it was developed this game is insane it really is it's incredible y'all hit that like button and subscribe today if you want to see me continue through the game and explore more of the different endings to the ultra deluxe which i'll be excited to do for y'all thank you very much for watching this and experiencing this with me i appreciate you being here i will see everyone in the next video. Peace.